Hi, I'm George Pearson, and we'll be doing this Photoshop Elements Neon Text Effect. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button, and of course, click on share as well. Don't forget to subscribe. I do several videos every single week, mostly on Photoshop Elements and Photoshop, and then occasionally some other stuff tossed in as well, just for the fun of it. Also, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Before we start this Photoshop Elements Neon Text project, you'll need to make sure you have the right typeface for the Dance Studio. And the one that I found over here, this is on defont.com, and it's called That's Font Folks. And there's a link for this in my download page. You'll find a link for that, of course, in the description. So make sure that you have this installed, downloaded and installed, before you start up Photoshop Elements so that this font will show up in the font list. If you don't know how to install a font on your computer, Go to the first page of the home page of defont.com and there's instructions right there on how to do that. Okay, now we're back to our project. We'll start this off by making a brand new file. Let me just close this one out of the way. There we are. We'll be using this in just a second. Let's make a brand new file, new blank file. I'll have this at the default Photoshop Elements size and I'll just have that docked right there. Get this out of the way and fit screen. There we go. Okay, let's bring up that other file. Back over here to Photo Bin, it's sitting right here. Now there's a link to download this, and you'll find that again on my download page for this video, and that's in the description. Just open it up, grab the background layer, and drag it over here. Now, I'm using this as a floating layer. If you don't have floating layers working, just go up to Edit, come down to Preferences and General, and make sure these two check boxes on the General tab are checked allow floating documents in expert mode and also enable floating document window docking. With those two checked, your files will come in like this as a floating document, then it's real easy just to drag your background layer into your other file. Okay, so we have ours in place. Let's now get this down to size. It's too big. I'll just drag it over like this so I can see the corner. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut to see the control handles. Grab a corner and just pull it down a ways like that in this reposition. Do this a couple of times until it gets small enough to fit. And there we go, it's just about right. I want it so that the height is the right height. There it is. Okay, let's now pull this up to the top like that. We can now just grab the middle of the bottom and the middle of the left and right sides and expand this out until it's just a little bit larger than our file. And that just fills the whole background with that. And then click on the green check mark to set that in place. Okay, here's our basic background. Let's now give it our background effects, and we'll start off by making a copy of this layer, where it says Layer 1, just right-click and choose Duplicate Layer. Mix a copy, choose OK. We're now going to blend this layer into the layer underneath, and that's going to give us our interesting kind of shiny glow to that. And we'll use the Blend Modes up here, and the one I'm using is the Linear Burn Blend Mode right there. It makes a real nice kind of high-gloss, shiny look on that, so that blends it in. We now need to darken this whole thing down a little bit, and we'll do that with a new layer above this layer. Go up to Layer, come down to New Fill Layer, and choose Solid Color, then OK. Put your cursor in the middle someplace and drag it right down to the bottom left-hand corner that makes it black, choose OK. So we now have a black layer in here. Let's now bring the opacity down on this one down to 40%. You can just type that in, there's our 40% right there. It just kind of darkens that down. The last step is that I want to have the corners darker, which helps to give the effect of the light actually glowing. So let's come down to the bottom layer here where it says Layer 1, and on this layer, go up to the Filter menu, come down to Correct Camera Distortion right there, and in here, I want the section here where it says Vignette, move that control clear to the left-hand side, and it just kind of darkens the corners down. Let me just show you that. There it is before and after. It's just darkening down those corners. Choose OK. All right, there we go. The background is now taken care of. Now move up here where it says Color Fill and make a new layer above that, and we can begin to work on our text layer. I tend to make a habit of making a clean 
new layer like this before I begin doing text, it just guarantees that we don't accidentally reselect layers underneath. So it's a real just it's a little simple trick to make things work just a little bit more easily. Okay, go over here to our colors, click on the little icon right there that resets your colors to the default foreground background, and then invert that. That should now give us text in white. If it doesn't, we'll fix that. Go over here to the type tool. Double check right here where it says color. That's white. That's what it should be. If you have the wrong color down here, if it's something else, just click on that little drop down and then choose the color that you want. White is right there. Okay, now the font that we're using is the one that's called That's Font, folks, and that's right there. If you don't have this, then you haven't downloaded that font and installed it. That has to be done before you open up Photoshop Elements for it to show up in this list. If you installed the font while you had Photoshop Elements opened up, just close Elements down and reopen it, and it should then show up on your list. So there we go. Now the size down here is 120 point, and the letting is 110 point, and I have it set at centered text. Then just come right here in the middle someplace like that, type an insertion point, and this just put in our text. And now go in front of where it says studio, put in four spaces, one, two, three, four. Let's reselect our text and let's set it at that, that's font folks, text right there. There's our font. Okay, dance studio, that looks good. Click on the okay. You can now reposition this so it's about centered. That's pretty good right here. Now I want it just a little bit of a rotation on this. So use the control T keyboard shortcut to bring up our control handles. That also brings up the options down here. And where it says angle, just change this to a negative 10. It's just a slight leaning over here towards the left hand side. And then click on the green check mark. This will be our base text. Now I need to convert this into just a graphic. So let's make a copy of our text layer. Also notice up here that our new layer disappeared. It was replaced by the text layer. Again, that's that little trick that I use to make sure our text is separate. Where it says Studio, right click and choose Duplicate Layer and OK. Then you can hide this one. I'm doing this in case I want to go back at some point and change what it says. I'll have this text layer all set to go. Now in this layer up here, our new text layer, right click and choose Simplify Layer. That converts this into a graphic instead of a text layer. We can now do a lot of stuff on that graphic. Now hold the control key down and click on our thumbnail right there. That selects all of the text. We can now easily fill this text with our neon color. Let's go over here to the color picker and right down here, the little pound sign right there, we're going to type in our color and the one that I'm using for this, this would be our highlight color, it's FF E1FF. There it is. FF E1FF. Choose OK. Grab the paint bucket and then just click inside of the letters here until the whole thing is nicely selected. There it is. Now I want to bring this selection down a little bit. Don't deselect. We're going to be making our selection smaller. So go up to the select menu, come down to modify and contract right there and then set this to contract by 10 pixels, choose OK, and then makes the selection a lot smaller as you can see right there. We're now going to copy this onto a new layer. So go up here to Layer, come down to New, and then Layer via Copy right there. And it makes a new layer up here. If I hide this layer, you'll see there's our new layer, and that's just that thin bit in there. Now we need to Soften this down just a little bit. So let's go up to the filter menu, come down to blur and the Gaussian blur right here and set this at four pixels, 4.0. Choose OK. That just kind of softens that up just a little bit. This will be the highlight on the lettering. OK, let's hide that. Go back to our regular letters right down here. It's our second layer where it says Dance Studio Copy. We're now going to change the fill on this one to a different color. So go back here to our color picker and let's change the number down here. And this time you want it to be an FD4AFF. It's just a lot more saturated. It's basically the same color, just a lot more color in there. Choose OK. And then back to the paint bucket and same thing, go back in and fill the letters in here. There we go. 
Now I want to put a glow around this and we'll do that glow using a layer style. So let's go up to layer, come down to layer style right here, style settings. Click on glow and outer right down there. Bring the opacity up to 80. There it is. And then bring the size up quite a ways. You can see the glow happening in there. Bring the size up to 43. I'll just type this in, 43. And now this little white box right there, click on that and then fill this with the same number that we just used up here. You can actually take this eyedropper tool right here and click in the letters and it fills that with the same color. Choose OK. And that gives us a nice little glow happening right in behind there on our letters. And then choose OK to set that in. So there's our letters and that glow. Bring our top layer back in again. There's the highlight on the top layer. Now all we need to do is to make a glow on the wall in behind these letters. Hold the control key down and click on the thumbnail for that layer. That selects the contents of that layer. In this case, that's our lettering. Let's now expand this. Go up to select, come down to modify. This time choose expand. And we'll be expanding this by 40 pixels. You can see it right there. Choose OK. And it gives us this nice big expansion. Now come down to the black fill layer right here. Make a new layer above that. I'll just use the new layer button. Here's our new layer above that one. And let's do a fill color in here as well. So let's go back to our color picker right here and then change the lettering right down here, our little code. Change this to C102C3. And it's a darker version of that same color right there. So we're using a light version for the highlight, a bright version kind of full saturation almost full saturation for our main lettering and then a darker version in here for the background glowing choose ok and then fill that using the paint bucket just click any place inside there will then fill that with that color and then you can go ahead and deselect now it looks pretty bad right now we'll be fixing this though by putting a blur on this go back up to filter come down to blur right here and the gaussian blur this time change the radius up to 60. So it's a real large blur and there it is, real large blur and that choose OK. We now need to blend that blur in with the bricks in behind and we'll do that again with the blend modes up here. Click on where it says normal and then come down to linear light which is right down here and that blends that into the bricks and it looks like it's glowing in behind our dance studio neon lettering. And there we go. We're all done. That's how you make this neon look. Now, if you want to change the color, we used three different colors. Again, we used a medium saturated level in here for our main lettering. We used a light version of that same color for the highlights and then a dark version of that same color for the glow in behind. Just change your main color here and then modify as you need for those two colors and you can get different colored neon that way. But there we go. There is the Dance Studio. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and of course click on share as well. Both of those really help out my channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos in the future. And take a look down below for my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn how to use Photoshop Elements. I cover the whole program, not just a few things that I show here on these YouTube videos, but everything inside the program and you'll really learn how to use the whole thing in very easy, quick, very specific videos.